Elon Musk recently bought Twitter for $43 billion. Apparently, he has been conducting code reviews himself. A couple of days ago, he tweeted a system design diagram for Twitter. Let's take a look. The diagram shows a read path for users' home timeline service. Note that this is different from the 2012 diagram from a Twitter presentation, which showed the right path. Comparing them will be comparing apple to oranges, which wouldn't make sense. I've redrawn the graph so you can see it more clearly. Let's do a quick review of what the home timeline does. On Twitter's homepage, you have two options to show the tweets. By latest tweets, which shows tweets from people you follow in reverse chronological order. This is relatively simple to implement. We find the people user follows and get the database, get them from the database or cache sorted by time. The home timeline is where the magic of infinite scroll happens. It shows a stream of tweets from accounts you follow as well as suggested content powered by a variety of signals or just stuff that's popular. In this timeline, I see a person making a teapot, an ad about green sustainability, insights from people I follow, as well as this random dog video. This is the holy grail that keeps Twitter so engaging. And this is what the diagram is about. Let's take a closer look. First, we notice in the legend that the next-gen systems are marked with dashes. Elon Musk later tweeted that some of the services are being deprecated. For example, the whole mixer is replacing the timeline service, and that's 10 times faster. So I removed the deprecated services. Now the data flow path becomes much cleaner. A request is sent from user's device to Twitter's backend using GraphQL. Home Mixer fetches users' followings, profile info, etc., and sends them to the Home Ranker. Home Ranker fetches candidates and ranks them using machine learning. The ranked items are returned to the client to be rendered on the front end. Let's take a look at the storage technologies that Twitter uses. The main database is called Manhattan. According to the official blog post, Manhattan is a general purpose distributed key value storage system that's designed for small, medium sized objects and fast response time. So it sounds a lot like something like a DynamoDB. Um, it stores tweets, DMs, ads, among other things. Essentially, a majority of the user generated content is stored in Manhattan. For caching, Twitter uses the popular open source distributed caching system, Memcached. These days, people mostly use Redis, but it's basic that's the same thing. On top of the database and the cache sits Straddle. Straddle brings together multiple data sources so they can be queried and mutated uniformly. Essentially, it's a uniform query interface. You can write one language to query all storage devices. It quite, it's quite common in, in big tech to have a uniform way to query all the data storages without writing the boilerplate code. So that simplifies engineering and data science. It also sounds a lot like some open source uh, tools like Apache Spark SQL, where you write one language and transparently access all the data behind the scene. First, Home Mixer takes user ID and finds user profiles using Gizmo Doc. Then, Home Mixer likely fetches followers from the social graph. A follower following relationship is stored as an edge of a graph with a source node and destination node. In a 2010 blog post, Twitter introduced their FlockDB that optimizes for finding large adjacencies. However, last time I checked, the project is no longer maintained. So it's not clear how the graph is stored now. Maybe they're just storing them in Manhattan? If you're a Twitter engineer who knows this, leave a comment below. Now let's take a look at the most important services, Home Ranker and Home Scorer. They do the heavy lifting of fetching, scoring, and ranking candidates. The candidate here means all the possible things that could be shown in your home timeline. For example, tweets, as a who to follow box. The, to understand how fetching and ranking means, we need to take a quick detour and learn about machine learning 101. In a typical workflow, you collect raw data, transform them, feed them into the model, and evaluate the results. You do this iteratively to keep improving the model. Here's an example. A feature is a property of the raw data. Imagine we are trying to predict the house price in California. We could use the square feet to predict the price, or we could use the number of bedrooms, or the zip code, or a combination of them. The actual price is called a label. We create a model, use a feature to make a prediction, and use the label to evaluate how accurately our prediction is. The transformation of raw data into feature is called feature engineering. In Twitter's case, the features are social graph, how many likes or retweets a tweet get, and the labels are your interaction with the tweet, such as clicks, retweets, likes, or comments. 
Twitter then uses this model to make predictions of what you want to see and show them in your timeline. In a production machine learning project, the effort spent on infrastructure often far exceeds the time spent on actual machine learning algorithms. To fetch data for training, we could get a raw data directly from the data sources. A better way to have a centralized feature store where common transformations are already done and ready to be used. And this is exactly what Twitter does. According to this uh, presentation, when a request comes in to, rate, uh, to score a tweet, it first goes to a feature store, pulling in hydrated features with data already transformed, and that gets phased into the prediction service, which contains the machine learning model that scores a tweet. The feature store is likely uses the straddle interface we mentioned earlier in this video. With that knowledge and narrow about, now we can take a look at home ranker and home scorer diagram again. The home ranker fetches all the candidates and sends them to the home scorer. The home scorer uses a feature store for hydration and then send the features to the prediction service to score the tweets and send the results back to the home ranker. I simplified diagram to show you the core data flow. So this has been Elon Musk's Twitter system design diagram explained. Hit the like button if you'd like to see more videos like this and let me know what you think of the design in the comment section. See you in the next video.